Hi, welcome back to my channel. How are you doing? I hope you're having a good day. So today's true crime case is different, very different to the other ones. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit weird actually because with this one, the police were so stuck, they had no leads or anything and it just kind of fell into their hands, which is really bizarre. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to be talking about James Fairweather and we're going to be talking about how how everything occurred basically so yeah while you're uh waiting for me to start would you mind clicking subscribe i never asked for you to subscribe until at the end and um i was looking at my analytics and it turns out that most of you are not actually subscribed and i really really want to work on how to get more subscribers so as i can make this work um so yeah please press subscribe while you're waiting James Fairweather. So on March 2014, uh, a different James, uh, James Atfield, was stabbed to death in a park in Colchester in England. Um, a passerby found him. He was 33 years old and he, he had five children. He'd recently had a brain injury and he the reason he got this brain injury was he he was in a car accident and he'd he'd become brain damaged as a result he was a really nice guy and he would never get into arguments with anyone he kept himself to himself he was a really good dad and yeah so it was really confusing when he was found dead in a park um when the passerby found him he was actually still alive uh, so she called paramedics and everything and they tried their best to save him but he just couldn't be saved he had 100 stab wounds um they stopped counting at 100 they couldn't decide if it was more or if it was extensions of these stab wounds um but there was at least 100 stab wounds like i say they did their best to save him but they just couldn't manage and unfortunately 33 year old james atfield passed away but who'd do such a thing to somebody who was such a nice person he was a great part of the community he like i said before he was a great dad and who would do such a thing there was no reason they couldn't find any reason that this had happened he had not been robbed his his wallet was still with him he hadn't been robbed he wasn't in any altercation with anyone there, there seemed to be no motive at all and even when they looked into it like police looked into his background they couldn't find anything at all that would mean that this man would be stabbed and it took months for police to find any leads that went anywhere no one was talking nothing was happening they just could not find anything so the only thing that the police had was there had been another stabbing three months earlier but it was very very different Nahid Almima and I apologize for my um description of her surname I don't think that's how it's pronounced but Nahid was a student at the University of Essex and she was from Saudi and she'd been stabbed to death when she was 31 years old but that's the only similarity there was with the two cases. Um, James Atfield was just stabbed in the park, whereas Nahid was pulled from a, a busy path and she was pulled along a trail. Um, and it was in broad daylight, And but James was killed at night time. It was also the the first attack on Nahid wasn't a frenzied attack Nahid only had 15 stab wounds and James had over 100 the the two attacks although they were both stabbings they didn't seem to be the same and police didn't link the two together for a long time because they were they were they were concerned that they had two attackers they had two killers on the loose so they were looking for two people and it wasn't even the same team that were working on it at one point because they, they didn't believe the two were linked. However, when when looking for James's attacker, they scoured the system looking for any offenders that were convicted of knife crime. They'd really, really hit a dead end and they went all the way through the list. They interviewed, there were 69 people on the list and they interviewed all 69 of those people and nothing nothing came from it they didn't they thought that it wasn't one of them 
one of the people that they did interview was he, like one of them was even 15 years old which was James Fairweather um he wasn't a high priority suspect or anything he his previous conviction was for holding up a concession stand and he stole a box of cigars but police interviewed him anyway and they were running out of ideas at this point Fairweather said that it was at home that night of and the night of the previous attack so both attacks he was at home and he had no motive he wasn't his last attack wasn't on people and so they, the police released him they believed him and it looked like at this point the case was going to go cold people were becoming worried to be honest with you around the town and everything they were concerned that there was not only one but two attackers on the loose and the parents stopped taking their kids to the park um even teenagers stopped hanging around so much you know and the parks and everything just became no-go zones people wouldn't go there so in an attempt to get people back using the parks again Colchester Town Council they even cut back all the hedgerows and they cut back all the undergrowth and everything so as people could see and so as they'd be a bit more compelled to actually use the parks and it, even that just didn't work people would not use the parks it was it was just like people were afraid they knew there was someone out there and they knew it was only a matter of time before the next victim was selected on May the 27th, 2015, police received a call from a member of the public, Michelle Sadler. She was reporting suspicious man loitering on a bridge. And this bridge, it was right next to the area where uh, Nahid had been killed. And she was saying that this, this guy, he was standing there, um, he had rubber gloves on. And he was, she was worried that he was, it was really suspicious. Um, whenever she came close to him he was um, acting in a weird way and it doesn't really describe what she means by that but she says acting in a weird way like i say he was wearing rubber gloves and he was up to something but she didn't really know what so she called police when police arrived the man was still there they searched him and he was carrying a clasp knife he was arrested and he was When James Atfield passed by, the voices told him that he's the one. And I quote, I went into a rage. He was shouting, stop, stop. But I couldn't. When you hear the voices laughing at you, you get a really good strength. I stabbed him in the head and the side. I hit him in the eye and there was a big pool of blood, end quote. Fairweather was absolutely obsessed with Peter Sutcliffe or the Yorkshire Ripper and when police searched his house they found DVDs, books, research and things like that from him and the, his internet history was absolutely filled with serial killer content and things like that and when I was researching this I was sat and I was thinking oh my god can you imagine if police searched my internet history it would be all that kind of thing i mean obviously not to this extent because he was obsessed but it would be a lot of that because a lot of what i do is researching true crime and things like that it wouldn't be to this extent but i was kind of thinking it's a bit crazy you know that at one point what point does your research become evidence and i kind of had to sit and think about that Fairweather went on trial at the Old Bailey on the in January 2016. Oh my god, I'm screwing up loads today. Fairweather went on trial at the Old Bailey in January 2016. He pleaded not guilty to murder, but I mean, obviously, we all know he treated we all know what he was doing. He pleaded guilty to manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. And on April the 22nd, 2016, he was found guilty of both murders. And he was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 27 years. Now, let's remember that when these crimes were committed, he was 15 years old. So, he's, his entire life, his entire adult life will be made up of prison. Um, the, the police and the jury and people did not buy that he 
was mentally ill and that he was hearing voices and things like that but that was his excuse that was his his reason for doing the killings and it's such a shame you know that the, i don't have any sympathy for him but it is such a shame that a young life like this was just it wasn't just those two people that lost their lives that james the killer also lost he lost what was left of his childhood and and his early adulthood and often we don't think about the what's what happens afterwards and when he comes out of prison obviously he's still in prison now but when he comes out of prison will he be a well-rounded individual or will he kill again because are we teaching him to be a criminal by putting him in the justice system? I mean, he has to be there because he's a cold bloody killer. But you do sometimes wonder if it's the solution. I don't know what another solution would be, but we do sometimes wonder if it's the solution. I know this was a really quick case, but I found it really interesting. There wasn't a lot of information on it, but I wanted to um, tell you about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Go and check out my TikTok. The information is down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.